everybody. Welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen, and I'm going to show you how to make chip and potato out of gum paste. Now, before we begin, if you guys need any supplies, check my links below to find anything you might need. And all right, here we go. I'm going to start with a big white block that I kind of rounded off on top. And now I'm using two light blue pieces that, you know, I was like when I'm making them, I was like, what the heck are these shaped like? And they're not really cones. And they look like something, and I was like, earplugs. <laughs> they look like earplugs like you'd buy in the store. So make two light blue earplugs out of gum paste and attach them. You saw I use a little piece of dried spaghetti to the bottom of our rounded off square. And, and our little chip is on her way. And I stuck a lollipop stick in there, as you can see, to attach her head later. I'm going to start with her skirt, kind of building her from the down up. Her skirt is three layers of hot pink. It goes dark and then medium and then light. So I just made a little bit of a wavy line on some very thinly rolled out hot pink here and just wrapped it around her waist. And um, yeah, I'm adding some little bit of ruffling to it. I'm using my little piping tool with the ball on it and just kind of lifting up and pinching on either side with my fingers, as you see there. Here's my middle layer. It's a little bit thinner, a little bit shorter. I don't know. Um, than the hot pink because I want the hot pink to show out from underneath and when I do the last layer that'll be even thinner than this layer so that you can see all the different colors and I'm going to ruffle it up and I'm using a little bit of water in between to make it stick and I I uh, when I was looking up this character because my like I said my kids are beyond you know these preschool shows now I'm like what the heck is a chip and potato and I found out that she's a pug and she goes to school and she has a little friend mouse that doesn't people think is a stuffed animal for some reason i don't know why she can't have a friend but okay and the one thing i noticed too was like everything i don't know these kid shows some of them are kind of eh, i want to use the word annoying but not <laughs> but i'm using it gently um with the with the adjective of puggy you know she was like puggy please and a puggy hug and and a puggy walk and ugh, i was like come on man we get it you're a pug but anyway that wasn't even nearly as creepy though as her little mouse friend Oh, and I'm adding dots to her, her overalls here as I'm complaining about my experience with her. Anyway, I'm going to use this dark blue to uh, wrap it around to make her little denim vest that she wears. I'm going to have, she has a giant head, so I'm not really worried about closing off the top. So I'm just kind of trimming out a long, thin rectangle. I'm using a circle cutter there to take a hollow out of each side to make where the, uh, the collar of the jacket would be when it wraps around in the front. See, kind of like right there. And I'm just going to, once I get a good size, I'm just going to kind of mush it up the top of it to fold over. You'll see that in a minute. But before I did that, I realized that she has a little heart on her shirt. So it's a light pink heart. I'm again using the same colors as the skirt and then the dark pink. So I used the lightest shade I had and the darkest shade I had. Made freehanded a couple little hearts. Then I'm going to wrap the vest around. And... Again, like I said, it goes around almost all the way. It kind of touches the heart on either side. It doesn't all the way touch it or cover it. So make sure you leave a little bit open there. I'm going to make her sneakers now. She's got little yellow shoes. And they have white on the toes and white soles. So I am just rolled out some white very thin. I'm going to kind of pull it oblong to cover the ends of them, of those pieces I made. And those pieces are just like, I don't know, big old beans, <laughs> really. There's nothing special in their shape or construct that you need to be worried about there. This is um, more circles that I cut out. Pulled them kind of oblong just to make the soles of her sneakers. And if they don't fit perfectly, you can just mush the shoe to fit it, see? Just like I did. Because the one was smaller than the other, but maybe you didn't notice until I told you about it. And once you get a good size and everything, just stick them on. Her legs kind of taper. That's why we went with the earplug shape because it's a little smaller on the one end. And they go into very small little shoes. Like she doesn't have very big feet because I guess pugs have small paws or something. I made a couple lines on the bottom of her jacket there just to make a seam, the impression of a seam. The circle I cut out and trimmed the top off of that I'm working on right there is going to be her pocket. I made an imprint using the same circle and then two little marks because their pocket has those little details on it. And that goes on the right breast pocket, a little yellow button, and it's done. This is just going to be one of her arms. I took a nice, um, a very light brown color. She's not really creamy. She's definitely got more brown and a little yellow to her. 
So watch your shading, you know, and the colors that you use when you make her. And a white sleeve, same idea, just kind of roll it out, cut it, cut one in and merge them together. She has four little paws or four little toes on her paw. So I made three little imprints there, little dents, and stick it on with some water. I just have her paw bent up, just, you know, sitting down, resting, whatever. That little white circle is a, is a round ball. That's going to be her buddy, Potato. I mentioned before that, you know, everything is puggy hug and puggy please and whatever. And that was kind of like, oh, yeah, okay. This mouse, like, totally turned me off the show. He's got two little ears, that little little Hershey kiss there, kind of shaped for his hair on top. I'm giving him a little bit of a body, and then I'm going to cover it up with another pocket. That's what I'm making right there. But the thing about this mouse I could not get past was the way he talked. Anytime he would talk or she'd be like, oh, ch potato, let's do this or that. He's like, <laughs> like, make some words mouse or squeak or something. Anyway, you see I wrapped the pocket around his body to make it look like he's sitting in her pocket because he hides all over her. Because for some reason, he's a secret. And I made another arm the same way as the first. Okay, maybe this is where the potato comes in because her head is like a giant potato. Her head is literally the size of her body. It's the same width and pretty much the same height as her torso. So you're going to have to let the tor the body that you just made over on the right there in the picture, let it rest for a day so it can be strong enough to support the weight. Uh, for the head, I tapered in a little bit at the top, you see. This is like a medium shade of brown. Um, I just kind of shaped it more teardroppy, just a little looser, more maybe more avocado shapey. I don't know. But that's going to be the dark fur around her muzzle. And then I'm using a proper brown right inside there, basically the same shape. That's going to be her actual muzzle. And I'm using this ball tool here to create a couple of eye sockets. She has enormous eyes. And I'm just going to hollow out a nice big groove on either side. They're not too far up, but they're not quite in the middle of her face either. They are well on either side of her muzzle though, so watch your placement of them. Okay, and yeah, just carve them on out. Make them nice and big and googly-eyed because poor little pugs are slightly deformed with all their years of being bred the way they have been. Okay, now I'm using basically a white Mentos kind of shaped piece of gum paste for each eye. Just press it in, round it off, shape it off. There you go. And you've got this weird looking owl creepy creature thing going. I'm making a little tiny piece of black gum paste there in the shape of a triangle for her nose. It's very small and it's set very high on the top of the brown muzzle. Did you see that? Now I'm going to add the black of her eyes. She doesn't have any dis difference between her uh, pupil or iris. It is all just big and black. So add some big black to it. And there you go. Now she actually looks like, you know, an animal, not just a creepy lumpy potato thing. I rolled out real thin. Um, piece of rectangle black gum paste there and I'm cutting thick little slices out of it to make her eyelashes she has three eyelashes on each eye they kind of start in the middle and then go out toward the side but they don't finish off to the side all the way you see they're more eh, one o'clock to through 215 ish <laughs> if you're doing clocks I'm adding two highlights to her eyes she's got a big one at the top and then a smaller one underneath of it right there and right there just like that Looking good. And now I'm going to make her ears. And if the clever ones of you out there have noticed, one of the little highlights in her right eye have fallen off. And I didn't even notice this until I put the head on. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm missing a highlight. And then I had to re-add it. So you'll see it mysteriously appear later. There it is. Poof. Like that. Okay. So the head goes on. My two little rounded off triangle ears are going to be attached. It's just the same shade of brown as before. I just put in a little bit of water on there, not too much, or they're going to slide right off, and just stick them on those humps there. I don't know if you noticed, too, how I kind of made a little ridge in the middle of her head there. I'm sorry, I didn't mention it before. Please forgive me. But there we go. Okay, looking good so far. And what kind of a little pug would she be if she didn't have a little curl of pink hair coming off the top of her head? Not a Nick Jr. one, that's for sure. At least I think she's Nick Jr. Anyway, so I made the little curl, cut it, and put it aside to dry. It has to harden before I can set it. I'm filling in Potato's ears. His ears have little pink hearts in them. He's got a pink nose, two little black eyes, a very small little happy face, 
with the, you know, little line coming down the middle from his nose and then little black eyebrows. There you go. And there he is. He's hiding in her pocket. She's not done yet. We're going to add her mouth now. I'm using black to do the line that comes down from her nose and the little cheek line, little smile lines on each side of her cheek. And I'm using red for her mouth. I have no idea why her mouth's a different color, but it is. So I'm making it the color that it should be. So go me for being careful of the details. All right, there's that little curl. It's still drying. Okay, I'm going to give her her eyebrows now. They're the same brown as her ears and the dark part of her muzzle. And instead of just doing a curve over her eye, it kind of flares out like eyelashes almost on the side. So you have the rounded off, but then you tip up the outside. You see it very well right there. I'm working on it. It's like that on either side. I don't know why, but it certainly is kind of makes her look a little cuter that way. Okay, back to our little pink curl. Once it sets up enough, a little bit of water. Press it against one of the big old melon humps that she has on her head. That's the official term there, guys, by the way, melon humps. And you got her. There she is. You got Chip and her little buddy potato hiding in her pocket. She's ready to go. Ready to sit on top of your preschooler's cake and look amazing. Now, as always, thank you for watching Cake-tastic Cakes. Please like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. And I will see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.